Hi, Russ of Aquarimax Pets here. Today's video is an isopod species profile of Armidilidium granulatum. This species' scientific name is fairly self-explanatory. Armidilidium means little armored one, and granulatum means granulated, or being composed of small grains. This likely refers to the rough texture of the perion and the pleon. According to gbif.org, and here's the full link, um, Armadilidium granulatum is found in many countries in Europe, with some records in northern Africa as well. It's now commonly kept by isopod hobbyists in various parts of the world. This is one of the largest Armadilidium isopods in the hobby, reaching a length of at least three quarters of an inch and possibly larger. It can and will conglobate, or roll up, when the occasion warrants, and it does tend to have nice yellow markings. As you can see, it's very similar to one of my favorite isopod species, Armadilidium gestroi, only with a rougher, less glossy appearance, and usually with fewer, less brilliant markings. This species is often known simply by its scientific name of Armadilidium granulatum, but is sometimes known as the yellow-spotted isopod or the granulated isopod. In the USA, the wild type is by far the most common form available, and in fact, I don't know of any other morphs available here in the USA. In other parts of the world, however, there are several granulatum morphs. Um, lemon morph has a higher yellow expression than the wild type, with a kind of brownish background, and it often produces the magic potion morph. So I wonder if lemon is the heterozygous expression of the gene, and magic potion is the homozygous or super form of the gene. I can't really know for sure, not having worked with them myself, but I think there's something interesting going on there. This stunning leucistic or leucistic specimen, I've heard it both ways, is known as white pearl. I'd like to thank Frank of insectinliba.com and Weird Pets PH, both of whom allowed me to use images from their sites, and you can find links to their sites down in the description. Before I delve deeper into this species profile, I'd like to thank all of my patrons at Patreon. Working with animals is what I love to do, and sharing my experiences with you is part of that. My patrons are a vital part of the process, from helping me with animal care to allowing me to make improvements in my filming equipment. A little goes a long way, and you can support Aquarimax Pets for as little as one US dollar a month, or about 3.3 cents a day. Believe me, though it may not sound like much, many patrons make a difference. If you'd like to help me continue to create educational content on the creatures we all love, please click the link at the end of this video, or in the description. And now back to Armadilidium granulatum and its reproduction. This species is not difficult to breed. Take good care of it, and it will produce for you. It's not as prolific as Armadilidium paracai, for example, but as you can see in this colony I was sent by Braden at Critters and More, there are specimens of all ages in here. In terms of care, granulatum is pretty forgiving. Like most isopods, add an inch or two of base substrate, such as organic compost, with a top layer of leaf litter, and you're good to go. Provide hides, such as bark slabs, and good ventilation. I like to offer some cross ventilation as part of that. This species definitely prefers a moisture gradient. Consistently damp conditions throughout the enclosure may cause molting issues, according to Smugbug species description. Room temperatures are perfectly acceptable, and a bit of a night drop is not an issue. If it's cooler at night, they're good. Like other Armadilidium species, they eat a lot of plant matter, but will also eat protein-rich items. Always provide decomposing leaf litter, as well as supplemental food items, vegetables, things like that. I offer supreme isopod chow a couple of times a week. This was an isopod I began keeping long ago, and my original colony eventually crashed, but that was before I knew what I know now about isopod husbandry. If you follow the care tips I just outlined, you shouldn't encounter many difficulties with this hardy Armadilidium species. I haven't used this species in a bioactive cleanup crew, but there are people who do. In many ways, it seems it would make a good match for bioactive vivaria, as long as they're not in continuously damp conditions with poor ventilation, or in an enclosure that is uniformly dry. Those extremes are probably not ideal for this species, but most Armadilidium species are adaptable if you're somewhere in the middle, but they also may decide to nibble on live plants, so keep them well fed and know that it may be a risk to keep them with live plants. So how about the pet potential of Armadilidium granulatum? It's hardy and it's large with an attractive pattern and coloration. These factors make it a good choice for a beginner. It's not known for being terribly bold, so it may not make the best display isopod, but it's a good one to round out a collection, and if you have a nice large culture of them, you'll see them a lot. 
Have you ever kept Armadillidium granulatum? If you have, let me know about your experience down in the comments. This video is part of a growing playlist of isopod species profiles, so make sure to catch them all. And thanks for watching. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, all on aquarium and vivarium pets, with lots of isopod content. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for all notifications so you don't miss my next video.